Hi, I'm Mike Sarmento, a construction manager with the Urban Drainage and Flood Control District. Today's topic concerns storm sewer outfalls. Outfalls appear to be fairly simple to construct. However, there are many critical components required to achieve a hydraulically effective system that is stable and easy to maintain. Outfalls are typically set into stream banks or is a part of a drop structure construction. However, they can also be a part of a box culvert, headwall, or wing wall penetration. Today we'll focus on bank installations as shown in this slide. The important components to key in on are the location and elevation of the flared end section, the cutoff or tow wall, and the joint restraints. It's important that the construction manager or inspector review the construction staking with the contractor before installing the flared end section or last section of pipe. It is fairly common that surveys don't accurately reflect field conditions for a variety of reasons. The goal is to locate the outfall so that it matches as closely into existing grades as possible and is neither recessed too far into the bank or penetrates too far into the channel. In addition, the outfall invert elevation must be set between 12 to 24 inches above the receiving channel invert or normal water surface elevation. In this photo, note that the flared in section appears to be lying on the channel bank. It also appears to be substantially short of the channel invert. A better solution would be to adjust both the outfall location and elevation to match into existing grades as much as possible. This will help prevent scouring from occurring along the pipe and flared in section during high flows in the receiving channel. In this photo, note that you can barely see the outfall in the midpoint of this channel upstream of the box culvert and grouted boulder drop structure. The outfall matches the bank grade and does not create a hydraulic obstruction. In this photo, the outfall is set too low and too close to the receiving channel invert. The outfall is partially blocked by sediment accumulations and results in reduced pipe capacity. It is important to take into account the location of the outfall and the potential for sediment accumulations such as occur within the inside radius of a curved channel. A good solution would be to raise the outfall invert elevation and recess the outfall further into the bank. Here the outfall and cutoff wall were set too high and penetrates too far into the receiving channel. The invert is too high above the buried soil riprap and the tow wall and flared in section will act as an hydraulic obstruction to channel flows. Let's talk about tow walls and cutoff walls now. Typically cutoff walls are simply a cutoff trench excavated that extends three feet below the downstream end of the flared in section. Typically only the upper section along the sides of the flared in section are formed. Forms may be required when soils or site conditions do not permit trenching. One key point is to ensure that the outfall or flared in section is not over excavated due to the problems encountered when trying to achieve compaction with backfill. In this photo, the outfall has been over excavated in order to place forms and it will be difficult trying to backfill material beneath the flared in section. In this photo, the contractor elected to use squeegee or crushed rock as the backfill material. This practice is discouraged due to the potential for scour and higher flows which can move the squeegee and lead to future settlement and erosion at this location. This is a good example of a neat line trench at the downstream end of the flared end section. The contractor has set forms for the exposed tow wall sections adjacent to the flared end section. Freeform cutoff walls are not acceptable for reasons shown in these two photos. Here the required widths and depths were not obtained and the contractor was required to remove and replace the tow walls. Joint restraints are the last component for inspection. Joint restraints are typically installed between the flared end section and the upstream section or two of pipe. All joint restraint threads must be trimmed flush with the interior bolts. This ensures that the bolts will not be a hydraulic obstruction or collect debris which would then reduce pipe capacity. We recommend that the threads be trimmed prior to installation for smaller pipes, typically those that are 24 inches or less. Here is an example of properly installed and trimmed joint restraints. This completes this module on storm sewer outfalls.